The process begins by removing all the bulk dust that's left behind after grinding. A vacuum wand is used to collect the majority of the dust that's on the surface of the concrete. Following this is shot blasting. This is a process that will remove the fine embedded dust that was left behind from the grinder that not only was created on the surface, but also packed into the pores of the surface of the concrete. The surface becomes visibly cleaner because that dust that's been placed in those pores through the diamonds crossing across the surface of the concrete, that dust is being agitated and then extracted under negative pressure by the shot blaster. The result is a much cleaner surface. It's similar to power washing, but of course done dry or sandblasting, but captive. When the process is finished, all that's required is a magnet sweep, which will pick up any of the loose shot that was left behind from the process. Next is the primer. This is a water-based epoxy that's being used to create a bond coat for the quartz that's going to create the texture that holds the overlay. This is a water-based product. It is two components and a third component of color is being added. This will tint the epoxy black, which will make the canvas itself more of a complete mask of a dark color. This will be useful later so that any voids that might show through the overlay would be dark rather than light. It's a simple dip and roll application of 8 to 10 mils of the water-based epoxy. While wet, dry quartz is broadcast to full saturation over the top of the coating. The wet epoxy is fully covered by the quartz, and this is allowed to dry at least a couple hours for this particular product or overnight if the time allows. Once it is dry enough or cured enough to support weight, a vacuum wand is used to collect all the loose quartz that did not stick to the epoxy. The mixing station is a device that allows the buckets to be held in place without the installer having to hold the bucket as the thick material is mixed. This is a handy little invention that makes it much easier on the installer so that all they're really concerned with is mixing the material and not having to fight the bucket wanting to spin as the drill is mixing the material. The product being used is a cement-based overlay that is made for this application. It's simply mixed with water to the right amount and to the desired consistency and then placed on the floor. Also being used is a splash guard, which is another little invention that keeps the pant legs of the installer clean as the material is mixed. There is no precise formula for how much water should be added. It's really going to be dependent upon the installer, how thick the material should be for the application. The placement of the overlay is going to be dependent upon the ultimate result. Whatever it is that's trying to be achieved, in this case a wood look plank, the material is being poured out in ribbons or in a straight line and then flattened with a magic trowel. This is a semi-flexible squeegee that is simply placing the material in a linear pattern. This will help with establishing the wood grain that would normally be in, in a wood look overlay. The idea is to pull that material in the direction in which the graining would normally be if it was in fact a wood floor. Consumption per 50 pound bag in this particular application is about 75, maybe 80 feet per one bag. Once the material is placed, it's then smoothed the second time with a spray mist of water and while wearing spikes 
to basically make the surface a little more uniform. This can be left rough if that's a desired finish for the wood look. In this particular case, it was smoothed a bit more so that the result is a little more of a smooth wood plank. Once cured, a laser line is used and a knife and a tape to establish the planks themselves. This is really up to the operator of what size the planks will be, what shape or dimensions they'll be. Really, it's, it's a matter of artistic license of what is desired in terms of how the wood plank should look. So this is essentially a grid pattern that's being created. Hard scraping follows this. This is to take off any of the little bumps that might be there from the placement. This is so that when it is sealed and finished, it's not anything rough that, that a shoe or a sock foot could get caught on or break off and leave a white spot. All the fine dust that's created during that scraping is vacuumed away. And then it's ready for coloring. Here again, this is really up to the installer and the client what color scheme is desired. There really is no limit to the colors that can be used or the techniques that can be employed. This particular one is a plank design that has nine inch planks and then two four and three quarter planks. The technique is to add accent colors or shading that will be the undertones or the darker colors of the final system. As it's being colored, the shape of the planks can be made out based on how the material is being applied. This is just a 8 to 1 gray that's being used for the accent colors. The second color being applied would be referred to as a color wash because the whole floor is going to get equally treated by the stain color. Here again, it is up to the installer as well as the, the client what color scheme is desired. There is no general rule. Obviously, colors that are used should be complementary or should, to some extent, mimic the look of a real wood. Whatever wood that might be, then the colors, of course, could be predetermined that way. Next is another color wash. The idea with this coat is to help unify the two different colors that are obviously quite contrasting between the gray and the light brown. The idea is to create some harmony between the two so it's a little more natural looking. The mixture is three colors. One is a, a brown, a lighter brown, and then a slight touch of gray to help unify with that original dark accent color of the gray that was there applied first. Water mist is sprayed over the surface. This helps to dilute the color some as it's applied and also to give it a more natural effect rather than look like paint. So it's the way that that stain is going to be absorbed that the water will influence. That pre-dampening helps it to spread out a little more naturally. Once dry, a second wash is done and it's basically with the same mixture. A little more gray was added to help unify those colors better because there is still quite a contrast. And it's applied the same way as the previous. It's a little bit darker, but that, that is to unify that gray and that light brown so that there's not quite so much contrast that makes it look hand painted. Once dry, a water-based urethane is applied. This is a two component product, uh, low odor, so it's good for interior use, can also be used exterior. It has a long pot life and it's fairly simple to apply. It will be applied by dip and roll method with a quarter inch epoxy glide roller, which does a good job to apply enough water-based urethane, but not so much that it would puddle or cause any uh, abnormal film reflection or film issues. There is no exact technique which is to be used for putting a water-based urethane on a surface. The idea, of course, is to roll out any roller lines so that when it does cure, it should be free of any of those marks or ridges. 
And that's about it. There is no one rule when it comes to doing a wood plank design. There is no necessarily right or wrong way to create the patterns. The main aim is to, of course, mimic what natural wood flooring would appear to be. So color choice is important. The plank width and length is important. And obviously any repetitions or seams lining up should be in at least the spirit of what a hardwood floor would normally appear to be. It is something that takes some practice and there are some rules when it comes to proper surface preparation for long-term durability of the floor. There are of course some rules for the pattern that's being created so it looks like natural wood. The coloring is something that just takes experimentation to gain some experience using the different colors together. And the protective top coat is something also that is to be considered for the floor's use and obviously long-term durability. <laughs>